Hey, what's up, fellas? So I'm getting some time to work on this. Got the front cover on, harmonic balancer on. I got the head just mocked up. Um, see that copper? And something to look for. Always rem remember to have that sharp point on the front where your head gasket goes. If it's not there, you got the head gasket backwards and it's going to overheat. Um, oh, I mocked up the... Uh, Put the dial indicator up here so I can make sure the timing pointer is at zero at top dead center because sometimes they can be off a little bit. This is just sheet metal. Sometimes it gets hit, uh, knocking around inside of a box or something, it gets bent, and then your uh, timing will be off. I think that's what happened with that first engine I had in the red car. It was off by a pretty good amount. I didn't notice it, and it wiped out the bearings after a little bit. The, I used to have, I mean, I still have them, but I had uh, Comp 1.7 Magnum uh, roller rockers on here. I'm going to use those on a red car, so I'm going to put these on. These are some old crane rockers that were in a box that I got for $40 downtown. A buddy of mine, Eric, told me about the, he saw it on Craigslist, I think it was, or Facebook Marketplace. And uh, it, it had like, there was just a big old box of, of Ford stuff so it had a starter in it, it was the old school starter I threw that away or in the, in the recycling um, it had a uh, some valve springs and I think titanium retainers I gave those to Brad he put on that black 82 GT and uh, and then it had these things they're little they're old cranes you can see right there maybe says crane but this is like the modern version of the 1.6 rocker uh 3a stud which i would prefer a 1.7 but with these uh <laughs> they're pretty small these are 121 grams each whoops and these are 159 i had sent pictures to one of the crane engineers that i've dealt with before and he had to go back into the archives to get to see what these were but he's like he said they still work and uh one of these had some <laughs> a little little bit of damage on it nothing horrible i just kind of smoothed it out a little bit it looks like a valve broke oh yeah that was the other thing it had a a box of uh chevrolet valves so apparently somebody back in the day had a had a small block ford with chevy valves in the heads probably you know like 351 heads and put a chevy valves in it that was kind of a common trick back back in the day before aftermarket heads were available and then so these are the newer ones uh so i'm gonna run these i've got the springs still set up for uh 1.7 rockers on the stock cam but if if i can get you know come across a set of rockers i'll i'll use them I found a set on eBay. They're, uh, I'll just have to post a link, but I want to see if any of you guys had heard of them before. They're, uh, they're, uh, I'm not sure if they're made in China, probably, but uh, I'll post a link. Let me know if you guys had heard anything about them. For like 150 bucks, this is working out perfect where the guy across the street's doing the lawn for him. So, uh, that's where I'm at on this, and, uh, I'll, uh, wrap this up so i can get in the next clip whenever he's gone later all right guys so the lawn guy from next door left uh this is a 1011-2 i think it's or 1011-1 whatever they are now uh came off the vincent's 331 was in pretty good shape when i took it off so i just cleaned it off put some copper spray on it and uh we're gonna put it on there and so while we've been busy taking weight out of the front of the car this is a Team Z uh, anti-roll bar right there. So taking some weight out of the front of the car and we're gonna add 11 pounds to the back of it. It's right over the axle. Um, they use, I guess it's a bronze bushing. And it goes in here like so. We've got some uh, spray lube at work. I'm gonna try to spray on here because I just, not comfortable with bare metal against that maybe it's fine i'm sure it probably has been used thousands of times by everybody else but i'm weirdo 
I want to have some kind of lube on there. So uh, it's a spray lube that we use on uh, missile launchers to lubricate the missile or the, the rail from when the missile goes off. I'll probably squirt some of that on the end of that just because give me a little warm fuzzy. And then I'll get this once the car is back in the garage with the engines done. I'll get the car back in the garage right now. It's going to weld these up because it looks like somebody mounted a trailer hitch right to the sheet metal, which I'm sure was pretty awesome. I had I had metal I put metal tape over it just because I didn't have I didn't feel good about trying to weld it with the bumper cover on, but now that the bumper cover's off, I can weld it up. So, anyway, that's where we're at. I'll uh probably update this tomorrow and throw it up on the interwebs tomorrow night. All right, appreciate y'all. All right, fellas, I was going to put the pan on, but I figured I'd cover a couple of things first. Uh, it's a good idea when you put the timing cover on, take a razor blade and trim this on both sides because a lot of times you can get that little thing sticking up right there will get you an oil leak. And then uh, with aftermarket stuff, you always want to double check, even the factory stuff, that you're, um, you got clearance between your pickup and the bottom of your pan. So I just set it on there with no gasket because that's it's gonna add like an eighth of an inch. Um, I put usually I use put this in a bag and then set it on here, but the uh, baffle inside the pan is making it knocking it off. So let's put a piece of tape over it. Just gotta remember to take that off when I get done. This is I got the heads on. I just gotta put the um, bolts on i had to go get some of this stuff this morning it's got arp bolts because i had them so i'm going to reuse them but this stuff works on the thread sealant and it's got a uh, teflon so you can use it in lieu of uh the arp lube i still use arp lube underneath the head bolts but i put this like underneath the washers and on the threads themselves just to keep it from leaking all right, so I'm going to wrap this up later. Uh, been busy with lots of stuff today. Just not much progress on this thing. All right, appreciate y'all. Later. Forgot to add this little thing. This is this is what it looks like with the, uh, the dry lube. It's just like a graphite spray I put on there. Just to uh, give it a little something. We use that stuff inside of bomb racks inside of missile launchers just to keep uh because you can't use regular lube that it you know like an oil or what grease or whatever that will attract dust you know especially in places like when you're downrange and so that's what we use all right appreciate y'all later so fellas so um i'm out in the garage today like I first time in about uh probably a week i uh took some time off from the garage i had two pretty big trees cut down in the backyard and there was a lot of work involved after you know kind of cleaning out the mess um, just a lot of stuff to kind of clean up after those guys got done I had to so two two big trees part of another tree cut down stumps ground a lot of money it took them four days so but on the good note i got the open up the backyard to get a lot of sun in so hopefully i can actually have some grass growing instead of dirt for the dogs uh, chasing each other around all the time so what i'm doing today is putting a clutch and flywheel and all that on the uh stupor trooper ant as you can see right here i got the aluminum flywheel on just about to put the clutch on so this is why i figured i would show you it is a vallejo fdc09 no idea what that is and then it's got aim it's an aim 12 or am 12 fcs vallejo also you know a smart person would probably label stuff when they took it apart <laughs> and put, stuck it in a bag that was just not me this time the uh one thing with this this is a stand i think i got it on amazon um it needed a lot of work to be able to even bolt up to the engine so I had to modify a few things and then I modified it some more so I could 
you know, I put the wheels on it and then I made that bracket there so I could put the flywheel on uh, pressure plate and all that stuff on the back end of the motor while it's on the stand. And, you know, like this, I was going to put the bolts in. Then I found a can with uh, the studs, all those goodies. So I figured I'll use them. And then uh, I'm sure some of you saw, or probably most all of you saw, the deal about Rod talking about what uh, the Glittons used to do, putting all the engines together on the ground. They never used a stand like that because you got the all the weights being held up by the back and then a thin wall block. You know, he said stuff's going to kind of distort. So I've... I asked Woody, you know, the guy who runs Ford Strokers, and he, his reply was you could build these engines in outer space in zero gravity and it would not make, have any effect. So there's that. I mean, it's the way I look at it, you know, it's my stuff or your stuff, however you want to do it. And uh, having it like this makes it pretty convenient to put uh, put all the head bolts in, put all the intake bolts in. Just the way it's going to be sitting in the car, you know, the bolts going up to the motor mounts and all the bolts on the back holding up the um, the bell housing and all that stuff. So can it be proven one way or the other? I don't know that it could, but uh, like I said, if you it's kind of one of them things. If you think it's worthwhile to do it that way, then go ahead. It's your stuff. Do it how you want to. So with that said, I'm going to put the clutch and pressure plate on and then uh put the bell housing on water pump and then the intake manifold and that'll probably wrap it up for today and then tomorrow you can get that ugly turd back in the garage it's been sitting outside for a spell and it's uh time to get it back in here finish taking some more stuff apart and get it ready to get start putting it all back together all right appreciate y'all later hey guys probably wonder what you're looking at these are the push rods i had in the little sack on the cart and this is all of the uh goo that was inside the push rods and on them i gotta finish cleaning them out but what had happened what happened was i had the push rods sitting here and when i used this last night to put the uh, uh head studs in I apparently did not close the cap all the way and when I left I knocked that over and it oozed out into the bag with the push rods and got all over the push rods and uh, made a huge mess so I got to finish cleaning them out then I can put them in I just dumped a five quart jug of uh, oil 10w30 Valvoline in here so far nothing's come out the bottom but I'm gonna put all the push rods in uh, make sure I'm getting, and then run the uh, oil pump. Make sure I'm getting good oil pressure to it. I'm getting the oil up to all the push rods, through the push rods into the rock arms. And then I can put the intake on and finish what I need to. And I think, I was thinking about it last night, I think the clutch on here is the one I got from uh, a guy named Mikey Mack. I forget what his last name is, it's kind of long. But uh, I think that, that clutch came from him. So, again, Mike, appreciate that. He's got a 68 Fairlane with a 302 and GT40 heads. Four-speed or five-speed maybe. But, anyway, runs really good. I know it's pretty tough getting a leaf spring car to launch, but I, I like that body style. Always been one of my favorites. So, um, again, thanks for the clutch, Mike. Hopefully this will work out good for me. This ain't going to make a whole lot of power, so it should be all right. But, uh We'll try her out, and then uh, I think I can get this stuff wrapped up today, unless the uh, I was going to do it last night, but then the bride informed me at dinner that she wanted me to take her out to look at Christmas lights around the neighborhood, and so guess what I did? I did not work on this. I worked on uh, showing her around the neighborhood looking at Christmas lights, and one of the guys has got a ridiculous setup on the other side of the subdivision. I mean, he's got stuff in his yard and two of the neighbor's yards. It's just, and he's got a setup that broadcasts like on 98.7, I think it was, or whatever, just like a little, a little FM transmitter. So all the lights go in sync with the music. It's pretty wild. I, it's like, I could probably put that up 
at the end of this just so there's something worthwhile <laughs> anyway i want to get at it appreciate y'all later on all right guys so i got the rockers on all but one i had uh i <laughs> pulled I pulled the bag out and started putting the rocker studs in and realized I only had 15. No idea where the other one is, but I've got one coming from Summit. These are the 3A stud, using them little bitty rockers, arms, a crane, old, old, old things from like the late 60s, early 70s. And uh, still using the same springs I had before. Uh, the lock nut is in there kind of far, so ideally... You'd put a like a grade eight washer underneath the rocker stud to give it a little more height, but with this cam, I ain't gonna worry about it. I think it'll be fine. At least I got my fingers crossed. I got the uh, galley plug up here in the front, so it's first first oil right on the distributor shaft. I got seventy five pounds of oil pressure, which is what it, the other engine did. It's I guess. Like pretty much this, what you get with a high pressure pump and stock, you know, unmodified bearings or anything like that. And uh, getting all up to everything. A couple are a little slow. It takes a bit to fill up the rocker or the uh, push rod. So I've been rotating it and running the pump. And uh, everything else, everything else is going good. It's just that two on that side. But it's. Uh, I'll run this now, get oil up to everything, and then I'll do it again just before I fire it. And uh, you'll be you'll be seeing that whenever that is, hopefully in the January. All right, I got to string all these together and get this posted. It's way taking uh, too much of y'all's time. Appreciate you though. Later.